Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have another rant for you today. And I'm going to be popping out another one later on today because I got stuff to talk about because these people never stop giving me easy stuff to get or go ape poop about. This is my personality. I have a high, you know, octane and... There are things that just irritate me and gnaw at me, and, and and it's like nails on chalkboard. And when you hear nails on chalkboard, you just gotta go crazy. And that's where I'm at right now, because it's it's like you never. Today I talk about you know Ariema, this flipping imbecile who's supposed to be one of the great, who's supposed to be the greatest women's basketball coach of all time, and he says absolutely preposterous shit. Thank you for watching that video. But now I got some other crap that I learned about yesterday that I didn't get to talk about because we did our full podcast. Before we jump in, we have past 3,000. We're getting closer to 3,100. Help us get there tonight. 3,100 is the number. I think we're right now at like 3,075. Help us get there tonight. Pat McAfee is getting paid a boatload of money with ESPN. Truckload. They, They dropped the Brinks truck off at his house. And he is getting paid buku bucks. And even though he's getting paid buku bucks, somebody told him that he can't talk about a certain somebody. You know who that is? I will let you see for yourself. Right. 10 years of off-season coverage is wild. Like the Olympics saved us this year. I assume same thing for you over there. Uh, Caitlin Clark, too, pal. Mm. There's no question about it. Well, the universe told me not to talk about her. <laughs> mm. Uh-oh. Is that right? The, u- the universe. I, yeah, yeah, the universe. Yeah, yeah, sent some messages. Yeah, God yeah. came in and was like, you know what, pal? Probably go ahead and stop it. That, I had no idea about that. Did you have a different universe? By the way, we're back on the Roku channel. Oh, it's great to be back. Hey, this is a good universe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Roku Roku You're, back. You're yeah. back. I've got about, about, about a minute and 50 <laughs> seconds till the radio audience rejoins, and th- th- that'll be a big audience. Um, so listen, uh, why why is the universe telling you not to talk about Caitlin Clark? Because I'm an idiot. Most <laughs> that, 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 the reason is because I'm an idiot. And I want to say we we are yes. big supporters. We took show to uh, Iowa to support during the first day of men's March Madness yep. to launch yes. uh, the women's March Madness because just wanted to catch the vibe of what Iowa was with Caitlin Clark on camp. I think what she has done, obviously remarkable. Now it's the whole rookie class and yada yada yada. We get it. United States Olympic team wrecked tickets, so I'm not even getting into it. But nonetheless, I am right. dumb, and the way I speak, not good. And multiple times, God has come in oh. and been like, you need to stop. Well, plus you're big, you're big in Iowa, though, because you try- Wow. One of your most well-known personalities is told that he can't talk about Caitlin Clark. Is it because he made some comments early on where he was kind of complimenting her but said some stuff that was profane? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. That might be the way it's being spun, but I don't think so. It's being spun. Oh, my God. Like, you can't even make this shit up anymore. Pat McAfee cannot talk about Caitlin Clark on his show because he's a dummy, as he says. And his language is a certain way. Get out of here, man. Pat McAfee can't talk about Caitlin Clark because Pat McAfee has a monster-sized following. A monster-sized following that I'm going to presume probably is 75% white. I'm guessing. I'm not for sure, but I'm guessing a large chunk of Pat McAfee's following is white. And probably a supporter of Caitlin Clark. And ESPN has done everything in its power through its different personalities that cover the WNBA to denigrate, dismiss, and deflect on her accomplishments. They've gone out of her way, out of their way to constantly big up everyone else while somehow diminishing what she has done. She goes for a triple-double, big deal. 
She's got 11 double, 10, 10, 11 double, 10 double doubles herself. Big deal. She leads the league in assists. Big deal. Leads all rookie scoring. Big deal. Is defended like no one else in the league. Big deal. Is guarded 94 feet without the ball. Big deal. Has drawn millions and millions and millions and millions of viewers on television. Big deal. Average is the largest home crowd attendance in the league. Big deal. Average is the largest road attendance crowd in the league. Big deal. None of this stuff matters to ESPN because there's a narrative that's been pushed by ESPN now for quite some time. It's been pushed all season. It's the Monica McNutts. It's the Drea Carters. It's the Chinia Guma case. It's the Carolyn Pex. I mean, it's everybody. And if you notice, the guy, people that constantly speak on behalf of Caitlin Clark in the on ESPN are men. But the women don't. The women have an agenda. ESPN has an agenda. The men don't have an agenda. The men's agenda is money. The men's agenda is skill. The men's agenda is what's good basketball. Pat McAfee's a humongous fan of Caitlin Clark, but he can't speak about her on his show, which is one of the more popular shows that ESPN has. It's ridiculous. Rich Eisen, who worked for ESPN, was shocked by that statement. Shocked. Is this what we're doing? Is this where we're going? Where we are preventing our on-air talent from talking about specific players? Because we know what Pat McAfee is going to say. He's going to promote her. He's going to big her up. He's going to make her number one. But if he was saying that Angel Reese was number one and Angel Reese was this or that, they'd have no problem with him talking about it. But because there's this nonstop agenda to take a shit on arguably the league's best player, second best player at worst, because he's either one or two. I'll say two right now just for shits and giggles, but realistically, skill-wise, she's number one. They are going out of their way to silence people who speak on her behalf. I'm still waiting. I haven't seen Monica McNutt get on ESPN in weeks. Maybe it's because I haven't watched First Take in a minute. Um, I've had a lot of stuff going on, so First Take is not – I used to watch First Take every day uh, in, at some point. But I've also noticed that I haven't really seen her on there, even in clips. And now football season is starting, so all you've had today, for example, I saw it today and I saw it in pieces, but it's all football. So think about that. Think about that right there. The call-out that was made about – to Stephen A. Smith by Monica McNutt some a couple months ago, where he called her out. She called him out, says, You haven't talked about the WNBA. You're right, because nobody cares. Who didn't play yesterday? Who hasn't played since Sunday? It's now Thursday. Stephen A. Smith knows. First take knows. The show knows. The producer who executive producer was Stephen A. Smith. He knows. He knows what people want to hear. He knows that no one gives two fuck all shits about anything else WNBA related, related except for Caitlin Clark. So why the hell is he going to talk about it? Couldn't care less. It's irrelevant to him. It's irrelevant to his show because no one will care. If Caitlin Clark played yesterday and busted a triple double or a double double or went for 25 and 12, it'd be talked about. She'd be talked about. But she didn't. So he, he's not. But Pat McAfee is being prevented from speaking about her too. This stuff reeks of sickness. This this stuff reeks. It's ridiculous. It it, it is. It's to the point where it's so in your face. And ESPN, of course, is a Disney company. So the Disney company has to defend everyone and defend all rights for all people. And I've never said anything about that not being okay. I have no issue with anyone white, black, Hispanic, Asian, gay, straight, whatever you want to call yourself, I don't care. But this Disney network shit, 
under ESPN's under the Disney network, Disney, they are controlled. And they can't say anything. Why hasn't this Gino Ariema thing been pushed on ESPN? Why hasn't it? Why haven't the ladies who cover the WNBA, who are so quick to take a dump on Caitlin Clark, not talked about the comments that Gino Ariema made beginning of June, where he made all of these statements and called everyone delusional, the fans delusional. See, you know when you lose credibility as a reporter or as a pundit, when you don't acknowledge that you might be wrong. And no one likes to admit being wrong. I hate admitting being wrong, but I can admit when I'm wrong. And I'm, a, I'm wrong tons of times. I mean, hell, last weekend I picked five fights for the UFC and UFC 305 in combat corner, and I got four of the five wrong. It is what it is. I thought that one of the decisions was incorrect. I thought I should have gone two and three. But I went one and four. So I was wrong. But they won't ever admit being wrong. They won't call bullshit out. The fact that L. Duncan apologizes to Cheryl Swoops for the bullshit that comes out of her mouth is just another example of silencing ESPN opinions. And now you have Cheryl Swoops with her next level of garbage where she mentions Lexi Hull, Leah Boston, Kelsey Mitchell, but ignores the best player on their team as the reason for why they're so good. It's like, it's like ignoring the fact that Michael Jordan played for the Bulls and saying Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Ron Harper, and Tony Kukoc. You're saying uh, J.R. Smith, Kyle Korver, Tristan Thompson, and Kyrie Irving for the Cavs when LeBron James is there. Like, come on. What are we doing? But no one will call it out. Why hasn't First Take called that shit out? Why hasn't any other – why hasn't anyone on ESPN called that bullshit out? Because they're all they're all working together for one cause, and that's to to find any which way to push Angel Reese. It's an, it's insane that the minority has such power over the majority. The minority has power over the majority. It's absolutely freaking ridiculous how people are prevented from having opinions because they're afraid uh, of what might be said against them by uh, by the minority of the of, of who have the opinion. I know lots of people, and I don't know one person that thinks that Angel. I know lots of ba- I mean basketball people, and I don't know not one person who genuinely believes that Angel Reese is the rookie of the year. And I know lots of basketball people who didn't watch one WNBA game until this season. And they're only watching it because of Caitlin Clark. So when Rich Eisen and Pat McAfee are having this conversation and Pat McAfee says, well, yeah, the people from the gods or whatever are telling us we can't talk about it. Like, that's fucking crazy. And it's so damn aggravating because it's just another example of silencing. And this is why, this is why there are channels like ours, specifically Rudy's Rant, Ben Daniel, Charging the Game, these different, uh, uh, there's another one that I watch, I forgot his damn name, but I watch him all the time. His name is, I think his name is Casey, Casey something is, let me, let me check real fast what his show is called because I want to give him props because I love his stuff as well. But there's so many. And that's why these these, these channels, I'm not saying that I started my channel because of Caitlin Clark. We didn't start our channel because of Caitlin Clark. We started our channel to talk sports. If we could talk about other things that people really cared about beyond this right now, we would. But the numbers are the numbers, and I'm going to give you what you want to hear. I'm going to give you what you want. I can talk about it all day. Trust me. I'd much rather talk about MMA for three hours. I'd much rather talk Yankees baseball for three hours. I'd rather talk basketball nba basketball i, I talked a lot about other things because the only thing i can talk about when the WNBA that anyone gives a shit about is caitlin clark talk about somebody else no one gives a crap they're irrelevant they're irrelevant well, let me see the name of that particular show that i'm that i'm thinking about behind the line behind the line i don't you know coach jb show fly hippie that's another one if you haven't checked those guys out, the chicks dig scars. Um, these are just a, bu- a few different ones that I'm wa- that I watch. Black and white sports too. Um, these are all different shows. This one, of the, which one is this? 
But yeah, those are a few different shows. So if you haven't seen those shows, go check them out because they give great content and they 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 give uh, an op- they give people an opportunity to speak on behalf of someone who's being completely dog shitted on by the massive sports network. The biggest sports ne- network remains ESPN, and there's not one person on that network who will speak on her fucking behalf, despite the fact that she's carrying the goddamn league. And now you hear this with Pat McAfee. He's being silenced by ESPN's brass. That's some fuck shit. But isn't it surprising? Not at all. Outkick is another one that I watch as well. Check out Outkick as well. It's flat censorship. They're censoring him. He didn't care before, but I guess he cares now. I don't know. End of the day, this is ridiculous. And it's another example of the bullshit that goes on ESPN. And that's why podcasts like ours who support Caitlin Clark and her and her success in my rants, I'm going to go in every freaking time because what I'm listening to and what I'm hearing, it just so bothersome. It's bothersome because they will never call up call. As my guy, Ben Daniel says, they will never call a spade a spade. They won't. And by the way, me and Ben Daniel this weekend, will be popping off on a freaking a joint uh, venture. So be, be sure to check it out. But they'll never call a spade a spade, as he says. So we got so he has to call a spade a spade. And I gotta keep it real and all of that. But anyhow, let me know your thoughts on this crap about how what ESPN is doing. Is ESPN censoring Pat McAfee? What do you think of their censorship of Pat McAfee? Because clearly that's what it is. Let me know. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow and ring that bell. Come on now.